This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our March Board of Selectmen meeting. I'm Mike Frieda, North Haven's first selectman, joined, as always, by our second selectman, Mr. William Piper, and our third selectwoman, Ms. Sally Buemi. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order and move to item number two, and we'll stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, Sally and Bill, item number three, the approval of the minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting from February 4th. I will make a motion to approve uh, those February 4th minutes. Um, I'll uh, second those minutes. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll move to item number four. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight uh, I thought that I'd give you a brief overview of where we are with the vaccinations across the state of Connecticut. At 4 p.m. this afternoon, I had one of my state vaccination uh, vaccine committee meetings with people from all over the state. So here's the latest, and I wanted to share it with you. Across the state of Connecticut this week, there were 156,390 first doses that were issued. There were 76,390 second doses. And when we look at the total doses this week, 232,780. So what does that really mean? Well, if we look at the totals to date, there have been 681,488 first doses administered. Now this represents about 18 or 19 percent of the total population in Connecticut who've been vaccinated. The second dose, the way it works is, as an example, if it's Pfizer, it's 21 days after the first dose that the second dose gets scheduled. And Moderna is 28 days. So in other words, if you register and get your first dose, you will automatically be in the system to receive your second dose. Depending upon if it's Pfizer or Moderna, there's that 21 to 28 day period for the second dose. Now this week in Connecticut, there were 39,000 doses of J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson, that were issued. That's a one-dose vaccine, and the efficacy of it uh, apparently is very strong. I'll, I want to share something else with you, but let's go through these numbers. So when we look at the first dose and the second dose, there's been over a million that have been administered. In the 75 and over age bracket, 74% of that demographic have received the first dose. When we look at the 65 to 74, 59% across Connecticut have received the first dose. And because the 55 and over segment of our population has recently been, been determined along with teachers, administrators, and bus drivers and paraprofessionals, 17% have received their first dose. Who's eligible for the COVID vaccine the COVID-19 vaccine. Well, you see that there's certain groups here, healthcare professionals, medical first responders, and you see the chart here in terms of who is actually eligible. Essentially, right now it's 55 and over, and in the early stages, all of our first responders had uh, the first opportunity to receive their first dose. There's timelines here, and you see it on the screen, in terms of when the next phases are rolling out for the different age brackets. Now, where we are right now, we started with about 46,000 vaccines a week in Connecticut. 
it vacillated between 46,000 and 50,000. We are now up to 105,000 on allocation to Connecticut every week. So that's a good thing. That does not include Johnson & Johnson, which is an additional 39,000. So the key to this, to getting people vaccinated as quickly as possible, is the weekly allocation that Connecticut gets. Up until now, I'd like you to visualize an hourglass. On the top of the hourglass is the high demand. The hourglass on the top is filled with the demand. People trying to get into the system, people who have appointments. In the center of the hourglass is the distribution channel, the supply chain. It's narrow because of the fact that the demand is high and has far exceeded the allocation that Connecticut's been getting up until now. And at the bottom of the hourglass is that 19% of the population in Connecticut who've received at least their first dose. Now here in North Haven, we're about 20 to 21% of the population has been vaccinated. So we're a little bit higher, but right in that 19% range with a couple of percentage points higher. Now, one of the things that's happening and Valerie and Tammy and I spent a lot of time on this during the day. We've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people here in the last month. Could be up to 700 to 800 people that we've tried to help to point them in the right direction or to get them on the waiting list here in North Haven because we're hosting a clinic here that is a Moderna vaccine. The health department here and the health departments all over the state are the ones who receive the vaccines. The town is, act, is acting as a facilitator. We facilitate the appointment schedules and it's the health department who administers the vaccines with their vaccinators. Our health department is North Haven. They represent Hamden, Bethany, Woodbridge, and Cheshire, not Cheshire. There's, there's, North Haven, Hamden, Bethany, and Woodbridge. So over here in North Haven, there's a combination of all different residents from those different towns who actually come here and there's a weekly allocation. Valerie and Tammy manage the appointments for our North Haven residents. And as I said, hundreds and hundreds of people. However, that's only one of many different portals and places that the residents can go. So I wanted to put this up on the screen. And one of the online registration vehicles is the VAMS, which is an acronym for Vaccine Administration Management System. And you can find that link on the state website, www.ct.gov. If we have residents, and we've had many of them, particularly in the 75 and over age bracket that didn't have internet service, there's a phone number here. 877-918-2224. Now at a state level, they put a thousand more people in the call centers to help answer this number. Because in the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, there was chaos, people could not get through. The lines were busy and they never were able to access that number. There's another site, www.covidvaccinefinder.ct.gov. We've had a lot of people, Valerie and Tammy are helping people with this, who we've been able to help secure appointments by going on that site. And then there's www.vaccinefinder.org, which is another site that offers a way to get registered to receive your first dose. And then of course there's the pharmacies, there's Walgreens, CVS, they each have their own portals. So in some cases, residents are setting up their own account at Walgreens or CVS and trying to get their first dose at the pharmacies. And also Walmart is administering vaccines. Now, some of this we've already mentioned. Options for how to access the vaccine. There's also the MyChart system through the Yale Healthcare system. And there's a phone number there. Hartford Health, that's MyChart Plus. There's a phone number there. 
We talked about Walgreens and CVS and Walmart. And then there's the Cornell Scott Health Center. And you see the number right there. And the veterans can contact the VA and there's a number there or www.va.gov. Now, I wanted to share with you this. Don't get frustrated. It's a process that is very cumbersome in many respects. We are here to help you at Town Hall. Once again, we are not the ones that get the allocation of vaccines. That's the health department. But we can facilitate and answer your calls and help you get registered if you're having a problem. You can call my office at Town Hall. And I used the hourglass metaphor a little bit earlier. So I wanted to just leave you with this. I know it's difficult, but patience sometimes is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while we're waiting. So if you can keep that in mind, help is on the way. NBC News called me the other day. They wanted to do a press conference with me on Zoom. And I said to the people across the state of Connecticut, help's on the way. And that help specifically is the increase in allocations that Connecticut gets on a weekly basis. Thank you very much for listening. And once again, if you have any questions, feel free to call my office. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before we move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, can I ask a couple of questions of about the vaccine issue? Yes. Um, you know, you gave some uh, important statistics uh, statewide, and then you said in North Haven we have 20 to 21 percent overall. Um, I was wondering, since um, educators, uh, which you said include not only teachers but administrators, bus drivers, they're um, starting this week, March 1st, with the 55 to 64 group, a group I'm very happy that I just squeaked into. Uh, so as far as North Haven educators, administrators, bus drivers, um, how are they, because uh, I've read in the paper clinics in some towns specifically just for educators. Um, you know, you mentioned we're hosting a clinic in North Haven. Uh, where is that and when did it start? It started right at the beginning. Let's say it was last month and it's over at the rec center. The rec center, yes. okay. Uh, so is where are our, our you know, North Haven educators, administrators, bus drivers um, getting their is that being coordinated by uh, it's your it's being, office or by the Board of Ed? Or? So the Board of Ed is coordinating it with the health department. So okay, what we have here is the Board of Ed works with the health department. And um, we've got a high demand because of this, by the way, Sally and Bill. So when you have the 55 and overs and the teachers and the paraprofessionals and the bus drivers, and we still have people on the waiting list, mm. it's been a challenge because uh, there's so much demand and the supply is somewhat limited. So they're getting vaccinated uh, through the health department. Now, Val, you might want to talk about, we're trying to see if we can get another separate clinic at the high school. We're doing it here on Lindsley Street, but okay. we want to make a comment. For later. Right, the clinic that we've been hosting at the rec center, I think it's important to note because you may see a lot of traffic there when we have them, but that clinic we are hosting for the four towns. I just said that. Right, yes, yes. so QVHD so, is there. It's four towns. The doses are being split among the towns. Right. And it's at the rec center. That's the education is going to be separate, uh, different clinics, but also administered through QVHD. And the QVHD appointments at the rec center are by appointment only, okay. and you cannot get them through calling QVHD. They're not taking calls. You have to go through our office. But we have suspended the appointments right now for the 55 and older okay. because the list is just um, insurmountable. We're trying to focus mainly on our, our oldest uh, residents who really need the help that don't have the internet that can't drive that can't get to where they need to go so we're trying to prioritize them but we do have limited doses that are coming through okay now when you say you know, just for the folks at home QVHD of course is Quinnipiac Valley Health, health, health district. district and we are in the health district as the first electman said with Hamden Bethany and Woodbridge so obviously the rec center is not the only facility in that district that's that's handling 
Well, they've um, had a few other there clinics must be another, elsewhere, the but other primarily towns. they're yeah. have, they're, we are hosting it here because okay. it, it's very convenient to, yeah. uh, to the other towns to come here. So the okay. Hamden folk, the Woodbridge, okay. and the Bethany are coming and here. So, and I think Mr. Frieda said that for North Haven residents, they would come go through your office, or Correct. is it also Hamden? Bethany no, and Woodbridge. they so are managing their own. They're managing their own, Correct. even if it's at the North Haven Rec Center. Correct. You're managing um, for the Rec Center uh, for just North Haven. Um, and as far as our educators, that's being done by the Board of Ed. Correct. And um, maybe, okay. Um, and uh, what percentage, uh, the first responders were in the first group. Um, uh, so our first responders, of course, are the police and fire, uh, and they definitely uh, should have been right there, first and foremost, being out in the public uh, so so much. Uh, what percentage of our uh, police and fire rank ranks uh, were vaccinated? I'd say about 98%. Oh, great, great. Um, yeah, I'd say about 98%. Okay. And um, I've heard a lot about, you know, Val and Tammy, you know, and, and you handling hundreds of calls and Val and Tammy handling the appointments for North Haveners at uh, uh, the QVHD facility at the rec center. What exactly is the, the fire chief doing in, um, in his court, in his position oh. as, what is he doing? Uh, oh, he is, this? he is my a liaison agent and designated. Did I say police chief or fire chief? Fire, I meant fire, fire chief. Fire chief. Sometimes I say police chief by mistake. That we all yeah. do. But no, the, he, the fire chief is what? He is my uh, designee and he works directly with the health department and uh, he will give them information, ask questions of them on my behalf and he manages the process over at the rec center and uh, many times is there uh, checking in to see how the flow of vaccines are being issued and he's had a critical role with the health uh, department director, uh, who is, a, her name is Karen. So okay, Paul's right. a key part of this. Right. Okay. Well, um, and uh, last month you had um, predicted or were hopeful that uh, the CVS here in North Haven, you had said, was one of um, a bunch of CVSs throughout the state. Right. Uh, and you were hoping for a startup there uh, for February 11th. That was our meeting, I think, was February 4th or 3rd. Did uh, they um, start up at no. CVS on the 11th? No, they oh. pushed it back. And they pushed it back not only here in North Haven, but other CVS stores wow. because they didn't have the quantity of vaccines to mm -hmm. do the administering. Have they so, started yet at all? Or, so it's still on? So C CVS has started, not here in North Haven. Okay. All right. And, that's what I was saying here earlier. There's a CVS portal where people could register. Right. The other thing that's happening, Sally and Bill, there's a lot of people who are very mobile that live here in North Haven. So when you go on these portals, you may see stores within a 10 mile limit, a 10 mile radius of where we are in North Haven. So you could actually, if it was as an example, CVS in Wallingford, which I don't think it is, but if it was, then you could go to Wallingford to get that appointment at CVS. But make no mistake, when I say we have hundreds and hundreds of calls here, we do. And Valerie and Tammy and I are not only helping people with the rec center, they're also helping people with my charts at Yale, with the portals, giving them information every day on the pharmacies. So the, there's a lot going on in this office right now trying to help people. Yeah, I, I, I have no doubt you're getting lots of calls. Maybe, you know, the information that was on your slides I thought was excellent. It gave a lot of numbers for a lot of different situations. And as Val said, you're highlighting the elderly folks who don't have the internet. I'm sure this information's on our website, but it might be prudent to highlight um, an article in the Citizen and or Courier, which everybody gets in the mail, with these slides. Part uh, of the, and maybe it, it'll cut down on the phone calls to you because if right. all you're doing is giving them those numbers or helping them, right. uh, you know, not as popular as our show is here tonight, not everybody's watching, but a lot of people um, uh, read those, uh, yeah. those local papers. Right. Part of the problem has been, this has been a very fluid and yeah. quickly evolving situation. Most of these numbers weren't even available last week and the, the portals just opened up for the CVS um, and the Walgreens 
and the vaccinefinder.org has that was just brand new we just found that out last week right so we're, we're it's constant information that we keep getting so that's why we really haven't printed anything okay and it's mostly by our own research that we're coming across all these numbers or and so we don't know exactly if they're going to continue or if they're going to change and I, we're trying not to cause more confusion but you're right we need to you know maybe yeah, do a better I, like job you, of like you said people not everybody has computer access right. and everybody gets that those those two newspapers in their mailbox it was just my suggestion right. now that we i thought the slides were very informative right. and uh this is just one forum to highlight yeah. them right uh, and that's you know, this i'm just a good point. Right. trying to cut down exactly on, like my chart, you have other this, stuff to do this was <laughs> just this just came about this week all okay. this information yeah. so yeah. you're right though Cubbies, we need Cubbies. to we i need just, to do it's it just to uh, get it out a suggestion there. to get to get it out there those two locals are uh, you know, everybody gets them in the mail, and mm -hmm. nobody is going anywhere doing anything. I think people read them. So I think we can do that. Yeah. That's a very good point. You know, but I never want to diminish the fact that this office is in motion every day with the public, ladies and gentlemen. I know we're going to talk about public comment, but this yeah. office is constantly, every day, in public comment, talking to residents every day. We average probably 100 to 150 phone calls a day over 200 emails collectively. I'm dealing with the public all day and night answering questions on social media. So we're in a perpetual public comment mode here. Now we're gonna talk more specifically about public comment as it relates to these meetings and the budget coming up. And Sally asked to have that on the agenda, so I'll turn that over to her when we get sure. to that. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt how, how, how busy you guys are. Uh, I'm just trying to come up with ideas to get more information out there because right. uh, there's a lot of misinformation too. There is. And, and that's, you know. One mm -hmm. of the positives, and I, I know you're, you're looking out for us and trying to reduce our workload, and I appreciate that too. But one of the positives um, with the interaction with having what we're hearing over and over is thank God someone's picking up the phone. Right. I'm calling numbers and no one's answering. I'm trying to get help. There's no one on the other end. Can you please help us and tell us what's going on? Expl am I doing something wrong? There's such a level of anxiety, um, mm. especially among our elderly people. Mm. They're so confused and they mm. just need someone to talk to and they feel mm. so much better after they've had a, just a few minutes of personal interaction yeah so I think that is important so I know we're busy but we we really don't mind because well, there's I, a, a great deal of satisfaction and I say that to Mike yeah. all the time when we know that we've really helped people I'd rather not have the calls diminished here to be honest with you because just what Valerie said you know I had a couple the other day that I helped and they were just so appreciative because they didn't know what to do and these were computer savvy people they couldn't get through we ended up helping them and they got registered for an appointment both the husband and the wife so that's kind of what we do here ladies and gentlemen we're constantly dealing and talking to the public and helping the public so well, I, I called that Yale New Haven Health number that you had up there, and uh, I was on hold for about 45 minutes, so I just put it on the speaker, put the phone down, listened to music while I was doing my puzzle. Did you uh, ultimately a get puzzle. a person? I did get a person, okay. so hang in there. They do yeah. come on. Okay. It took about 40 to 45 minutes, but if you have a phone with a speaker phone, you can put it down and do something else. Just when you hear them come on, Get it right away. Yeah, right. <laughs> you missed your opportunity. So, <laughs> so I it did make it. So, you know, you talked a little bit. You had a quote about patients. Yeah. Um, you have to have the patients to be on hold for a while. Yeah. There's three and a half million people in Connecticut. So you got to be on hold. Um, so, okay. Well, thank you for the okay. additional information and answering my questions. We'll do that. Questions. We'll take your suggestion and do that. Okay, okay. great. Well, you know, the encouraging thing that I think you said earlier, too, is that in terms of... Um, the uh, state of Connecticut um, continuing to expand the number of people at the call center. Yeah. You know, we're up to a thousand now. So, you know, I think I think you know the you know the the state is you know, and I know you're on that statewide committee and everything. Um, you know, I think is continue to put resources there to try to help people as well. So, you know, in terms of booking them, so, so that's actually good news as well. You know, Bill, the, the benefit of being on that statewide vaccine committee—it's not that I'm a decision maker on that, you know—in terms of dictating to uh, the state what we should be doing. But what it's what it's done, and it's no different than me being involved with all the other organizations I'm involved with. It's 
been it's it's been great to be able for me to provide Valerie and Tammy with real-time information what's happening at the state level so that when we're dealing with our residents who are calling we have the updated information because of the fact I'm on this committee so it has had its benefit for the residents with me being involved with that committee and that's makes me very happy because I don't need to be the chairman of that committee. I'm chairman of enough committees, but as long as I have access to information that helps us and helps our residents, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, because you're getting first-hand information. Yes. You know, that you, you know, in, in real time versus, you know, it filtering down, you know, maybe uh, less efficiently. Right. Sally, I'll turn it over to you now. Sure. You asked it for this. Yes, uh, item five is um, some discussion items that I uh, respectfully requested and I appreciate them uh, on the agenda. First, uh, I just wanted to remind you again, I think I did this in September and then in November, uh, we had a meeting. I think it was, we had a couple of special meetings in April. It was a kind of a busy uh, time with some special issues, with COVID related issues and the, the tax deferment so I didn't have the exact date but I because we had a few meetings in April um, uh, where um, some legal issues that I wanted to discuss with town council were postponed because you might recall town council had to leave yes. and so I just wanted to remind you if we could try to work on, on putting that together at some meeting in the future I'm reminding you every two to three yes. months I think that's reasonable I made the commitment to you yeah we will do it okay, okay. In fact, we did talk to our town attorney on this and okay we'll, we'll look to schedule this right time, and so. if I don't hear anything then I'll bug you again in okay. another two months but I, I you know the one year April will be here that's a, a year uh, amazing Quite a year. Quite a year. But okay, the next one is uh, the 2122 budget and budget process. I just wanted, I had one budget comment, and then I wanted to talk about the budget process itself. Uh, I did watch the Board of Finance meeting um, last month, and when uh, I guess it was during the police uh, budget workshop. Uh, at the at last month's Board of Finance meeting. I believe it was um, Board of Finance member Ms. Barrett who had asked about the dispatcher expense, which had gone up 3,000% uh, from 1,000 to 30,000. And of course, you might recall at the January 11th, 2021 Board of Selectmen budget workshop, that caught my eye and I asked about it. It was on my list of questions. And uh, when I asked about that 3,000% increase, I was told, and these are my notes from the, the booklet, and you know, I have a common practice of putting quotation marks around what is actually said. And Ed had said that that was um, a requirement because of the PSAR. And when Mrs. Barrett asked about it, you said it wasn't because of the PSAR and that it was something you were going to do anyway and yeah. that it helped with liability right. and it helped keep reports um, you know more informative and it was a liability issue that was going to be done anyway so it was seemed kind of conflicting the answer that was given at the Board of Finance meeting seemed to conflict with what the finance director told me at the Board of Selectmen workshop oh. which was and again I quote a requirement because of PSAR quote to oversee reports um, and is this a one-time thing or is it an every year thing well I think you know I'd have to check that I think okay. there's going to be a maintenance upgrade on this but let me just explain this for a second all right um, Ed at the time probably uh, felt that that was the right answer but I mentioned at the Board of Finance meeting that we're going to do this anyway and I'm going to tell you why and it all goes back to uh, us looking back and examining and analyzing the quality of the 911 call. Prior to us adding dispatchers, our dispatch system was so overloaded with calls that many times um, in an effort to get a call, a call would come in as an example, let's say that there's a dog running loose, okay? But there's another call coming in on someone potentially having a life-threatening type injury. So we realized that there has to be more regimented and rigorous protocols in place 
to monitor each and every call that comes in to determine the priority calls, to ensure that those life-threatening calls are handled with specific protocols and procedures. And that's why I said at the Board of Finance meeting, we were going to do this anyway. Um, so that's my answer. To okay. It. All right. Uh, Ed had given me the impression at the January 11th that it was um, because we are now the holder of the PSAR with that responsibility, or I should say that designation, comes the responsibility of these special reports and so, uh, but that, that is a um, helpful uh, clarification, but it did seem to be uh, conflicting what, what, what Ed said to me and what you had answered at that time. Okay. Most important thing is that, I, I agree with you, we, we shouldn't be handling loose dog as important as loose dogs are. You and I love dogs. Yes. Um, we'll too. be talking about dogs in a little while, I think. Um, <laughs> um, we cover everything here, folks. Um, <laughs> We do. <laughs> uh, um, you know, as important as dogs are, we really, uh, I understand your point about uh, um, distinguishing emergency medical calls, um, but uh, I do believe this, this particular increase or drastic increase has a, a lot to do with PSAR requirements. Um, and although, you're, as you're saying, it's, it's, it was a prudent thing to do anyway. So. I think that helps clarify it. Okay. Um, regarding the budget process, and yes. um, uh, I'm sure you are aware of the um, announcements the governor made today about loosening of yeah. uh, some restrictions. Some are going, the, the, you know, the, the, there's different dates for different right. loosenings of restrictions. It's a little hard to follow, but some are going into effect March 19th, some April 2nd. I watched his. Uh, briefing uh, with great interest today. Um, and so I thought it was uh, important, uh, you know, previously I had put this on the agenda. I'm hopeful as far as our budget process for fiscal year 21-22, uh, which we are in the middle of right now, um, specifically with regard to the public hearing that I believe is scheduled for Tuesday, April 6th. Last year, of course, uh, there was no public hearing, you know, the, the, the whole COVID thing was very new to us in early April of last year. There was a lot of uncertainty. Um, I hope that we could have uh, the public hearing uh, in some format. So, and um, I'm also hopeful that there'll be a full budget referendum. So that's what I meant by talking about the budget okay. process. So okay. let, me, let me weigh in on this. Prior to this announcement today, um, right from the get-go, it was my intention, and we're going to have a referendum this year. That's definite. Yeah. I that is definite. Ladies and gentlemen, there will not be what we did last year, even though across the state of Connecticut, earlier today, a number of chief elected officials were trying to lobby the state and the governor's office to do another executive order waiving the referendum. I'm not on board with that. And I told my, some of my colleagues that. North Haven will have a budget referendum this year. Now, as it relates to the town hearings, prior to today's announcement, what I had planned to do was in this room, I was going to do a Zoom meeting and present the town budget. Ed Swinkowski would sit there, and I was going to handle every question in the chat box, acknowledge the person asking the question, and answer that person's question, which is what I do when I ran the statewide mayor's meetings uh, as CCM president. Now, with today's announcement, we have to really kind of figure that out because we're still only, as I mentioned earlier, 20, 22 percent total population vaccinated. Next month, maybe it goes up to 27 percent vaccinated. So by the time the referendum rolls around, you might say, well, what's the percentage going to be in May when we have the referendum? But we can control it better with the way we did in the November election. People will be socially distanced. The registrars will have, uh, and the people working the polls will have the shields, the masks. So the referendum is definitely going to happen. I'm not sure about the public hearing in April okay. yet. We will present the budget, and you will have the opportunity to ask questions. I, I, would, I, oh, go ahead, I, would, I would agree. We could do it in November, you know, and now that we're making progress in terms of people getting vaccinated, there's 
absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to do the referendum for the budget. You know, well, uh, if you look at recent referendums, budget referendums in May, and this one is scheduled, uh, where is it, May 18th, um, you know, we're, they've been, unfortunately, uh, averaging anywhere from 900 to 12 to 1300 people voting. Um, and certainly in November, you know, when everybody votes at the rec center, all right. it's the only polling place open. Now in November, the presidential election, the rec center was just one of five polling places, but well oh, close to 2,800 people mm -hmm. voted. So, and that was handled pretty well. So I, I think with, and everybody's pretty used to masks and social distancing and keeping mm -hmm. back in line. So I, I think, uh, we could do uh, um, the referendum, and, and you seem committed to it. As um, as much as I have great, uh, I, ho I hold all members of the Board of Finance in high esteem, and they last year, um, as a group of seven, uh, adopted the budget. Um, I think that should have been a one-time thing because of the COVID emergency. So hopefully we'll have a referendum. Well, we're going to have a referendum. Yeah. That's Good. definite. All right. So. Well, that's great to yeah. know. As far as the public hearing, uh, I believe um, the governor announced that you could have indoor up to 100 people. I don't recall him saying if and only if you've been vaccinated. You know, our, our high school auditorium holds, it, 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 um, I don't know how many it holds. Certainly hundreds. More, yeah, yeah, well more yeah, than hundreds. I think there could be... It, you know, I think we could put a hundred people in there with six feet um, between yeah. people. Well, uh, again, so this just came out today. So yeah, I'm just, I, I know. I'm just sharing with you where I was before this announcement, and we haven't had a chance to figure the public hearing out yet. So right. Well, when I put this on the agenda, which was a few days ago before the governor's mm -hmm. announcement, I was going to be advocating for something like you said, a Zoom, a live. Yeah. You know, where the people could uh, have. A, a live uh, chat with you right. um, as a pro um, uh, but now we could we could take a look at see if actually an in-person is possible based yeah. on these new regulations but at a minimum hopefully we could have a budget hearing this uh, a public hearing this year um, via zoom where folks could uh, call in and talk to you or communicate with you right. live because um, you might recall last year at the budget town meeting which is always eight days before the referendum uh, you and the superintendent fielded um, questions that had to be emailed a right. week ahead of time right. and then you had a fair number but it was from the normal cast of characters um, that that sent in questions myself mm -hmm. included mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> I'm hoping that with a <laughs> with a public oh. hearing more folks could participate that's what I'm trying to say yeah so you know, we just found this out today, ladies and gentlemen, as Sally mentioned, okay? Yeah. So it may end up to be, we're definitely gonna have a referendum, that's definite. It may end up to be a hybrid town meeting format where in April we do the Zoom meeting and I acknowledge the questions on the chat and then a month later we have the in-person meeting at the high school. But again, we haven't, this happened very quickly. This just <laughs> happened this afternoon. So uh, we have to figure the public hearings out, but it'll be, a much improved process from where it was last year right which was no public hearing right and an email only yes. budget town meeting so that's basically uh, i'm hoping for improvement and based on the very new information today maybe, maybe. something yes. better yes okay and finally you've already referenced um this is the third time or so that i've mentioned um, public comment and I specifically referenced the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, the Fire and Police Commission. Our town charter certainly acknowledged the um, importance of those four boards by making them elected rather than appointed. Uh, the other appoint, appoint uh, the other elected boards, the Board of Ed and the Planning and Zoning have had live um, in person, you know, live by telephone public comment for quite some time. And uh, I once again am making a plea that uh, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the Fire and Police Commission also uh, uh, make some accommodation for uh, live uh, telephone um, public comment. Um, and again, based on the new information that we got today from the governor, um, 
we might be able to have some people uh, in a few months. Who knows? We'll see. So to this point, um, what we're going to do here is uh, we've had an email format. We haven't got any emails. You know, uh, when the agendas are published, we will entertain public comment through an email question. So we haven't gotten any. So at the April meeting here, uh, we were working with Alex and Valerie's handling this for me to have a dial-in, a, a phone where people could call in and ask questions. And then maybe in May we can get back to, you know, a modified approach here where people can come into the meetings and, and sit back there and ask questions. And uh, as things loosen up, uh, our goal is to get back to having the live in-person meetings. But I don't want what's happened in the last year to be construed that we're not being transparent here because we have an obligation to keep people safe. And this government, with what we described earlier, with the hundreds and hundreds of calls we get a week, uh, this is a highly transparent government. You know, I'm on social media last night ask, answering people's questions. So it's not that we don't answer questions, but in the past year, because of this pandemic, because of the number of people who've been sick, personal friends of mine have been in the hospital for eight days. Um, so we've got to be careful. And we're going to get back to normalcy very soon. And uh, hopefully some of the things we said tonight, the referendum, you know, with, this, with the public hearings are a demonstration of us trying to get back to normalcy here. Right. Uh, but regarding public comment, you know, again, I've, I've brought this up quite a few times the, the past since um, early last fall. Uh, you know, Governor Lamont's um, order of March 10th, 2020, that is always referenced in the beginning of our um, Board of Selectmen agendas, simply suspended the requirement of in-person meetings. It did not prohibit them. Uh, other towns, I know Wallingford, for example, which has a mayor town council, did in during the summer months um, allow people in in person for public comment and then in october november when there was an uptick they, they stopped it again um so th there's there's nothing in the governor's orders that prohibits in-person public comment it's just what he did was he suspended the requirements in in uh, freedom of information act of of in-person meeting but there was a number of people which made it difficult right. to manage because right. if you opened the meeting, then how would you turn people away if you had more people than the, right. the number that was permitted? So that was well, a challenge. Yeah, right, right. But um, I understand that. But um, and and I see that we do allow here. And now, this is this new. We have the email address in this. Um, agenda it we didn't have it in january did, did we have it no last we month? had it in february oh, so, so we started it last month correct okay this we haven't gotten time. any right i know the board of finance started that in the fall right um and uh i know um for example mary white had sent in public comments for the november um board of finance meeting which were addressed at the meeting by the um town uh, by the chair of board of finance i submitted three public comments in december and they were not referenced so you know I, public comment is supposed to be public comment if you do it by email you're not supposed to pick and choose the emails that you like and talk about those and then not talk about the ones you don't like um so uh if we're going to have uh for the next couple of months until we figure out something else um public comment by email Let's let's make sure we, we read them all. I think you'll uh, see it be by telephone next month. So. Okay, great. Well, so. that would be great. So uh, I think that uh, again, I very much appreciate yeah. you accommodating my request to get these issues on the agenda, um, and uh, I appreciate you uh, letting me uh, talk again about uh, public comment. And okay. that is it for me. On so right. uh, you could take over for item six. Um, what, and there's a lot of, I think a lot, I mean, it's, as we talked about earlier in terms of the challenges getting people um, appointments for vaccination, um, you know, I think you have the same issue here. I've been on a lot of, I've been on more than my share of Zoom, um, WebEx, and Skype meetings in terms of different technology. And there's, it, it quite often, no matter what, what you're on or how you're doing with people calling in or people, you know, being in on a video basis or whatever, 
um, it's it's never never a smooth process, I mean, especially when you add a lot of people in. So you know, uh, and you, know, you think back in terms of you know what we said earlier about vaccinations. A lot of people don't have the access to you know something like Zoom. I mean, um, you know, I, I, and I think you get better at you get better at uh, you get better at these things with practice. Um, if you've never used it, it's not an easy, you know, easy, um, easy, uh, easy thing to use if you're not used to it. So, you know, maybe again we're better off with a lower technology thing like a call-in, you know, uh, arrangement where people can talk as opposed to having a more difficult um, requirement from a technology standpoint that you know that they that they come in through other means if they're not used to it so yeah I, so I agree. simple is better you know I, I agree with you Bill um, and, and I, I referenced earlier the, the Board of Ed and Planning and Zoning have been doing it by phone uh, the phone's been around quite a while uh, as far as right. technology goes <laughs> so uh, oh, most so people have phones that's our plan. So yeah. we're, we're, we're working uh, very uh, hard, Valerie, is we're getting a dial-in for next month, okay? Yes. yes. Now, Sally, yes. Under, sorry, you turned it over to me for item number oh. six, under yeah. correspondence. You covered a lot on the public comment because uh, we had uh, correspondence from Mr. Fowler and Mr. George, and I think you've covered, we've answered the questions on public comment. Um, yes, it looks like both uh, Mr. Fowler and Mr. George. George wrote to the three of us. And when people write to the three of us, we're supposed to talk about it publicly, right. I believe you. So you and did. they were both um, both uh, very strongly uh, hoping that public comment would right. return. Uh, so yeah, I think right. we've covered it. But uh, we certainly appreciate Mr. Fowler and Mr. George writing to us. and. Um, um, expressing to us their sentiments that uh, public comment uh, return. Actually, I, you know, I think it's the most popular part of our meetings <laughs> is public comment. <laughs> so, all right, <laughs> might Mr. help George, our ratings. Mr. If we George bring it also back. commented on the um, uh, the referendum, I think, too. In, in terms so of Sally that. covered it in her with her yeah. question. So, yeah, to I, give I him do. credit as she well. read. Sally saw the correspondence and she requested the items be put on the agenda. And she brought it up, which you did. You yeah. Good job bringing it up. I answered the questions and let right. you know where we're at. Now, on uh, the correspondence regarding the Police Dog Appreciation Day. So, look, uh, here's where we are on this bill. Um, I, I talked to the police chief on this, and he's not inclined to do it. Okay. So, and one of the things, ladies and gentlemen, I don't do here, is this isn't a dictatorship in this government. I don't dictate the commission chairman or department heads what they should do. We will engage in a collaborative discussion. In this case, I reviewed this with the police chief. Uh, he does not want to do it right now. He'll keep an open mind to it. This was recognizing our canine unit. Um, our police department likes to stay a little bit under the radar screen, and he'll keep an open mind to it. He'll revisit it, but it's not going to happen right now. Right. Well, once again, we thank Mr. George wrote in again, uh, re, you know, suggesting this because there is a na I, and I didn't know there was a national uh, police dog appreciation week in May. Um, you know, and, and again, I'm always appreciative of, of citizens who, who yeah. write to us with their ideas. But um, uh, you talked it over uh, with the chief, and if that's his his feeling, uh, you know, I thought at a minimum it would have been some sort of resolution like we do for Girl Scouts or whatever, acknowledging. Uh, the dog handlers, because the, the, the two police men who handle our two dogs, that's quite a commitment. It's, it it's yeah. it's becomes part of their families. Right. You know, I've been involved with this for years, and there's no bigger supporter of the canine unit than, than I am. In fact, uh, prior to me taking office, there were no canine units here. But I was involved with bringing Zeus and Coda here in conjunction with the police department. Mm. In fact, there's pictures of me on Facebook with Coda hugging me and me hugging Coda that went viral about six or seven years ago. So I love these dogs and I love animals in general, as Sally knows and Bill knows. But in this case, uh, we appreciated the correspondence. I did talk to the police chief and it's his opinion that he doesn't want to do it right. Okay. Now, so. that, that's it's his, it's his department, as you say. Um, but we do. I think it was very nice on you know, yeah. and, and I I agree with that. This you know, with that with that comment in terms of that you both made. But on the other hand, it was very nice of him to think of 
our police department and you know in our in and the and the dogs you know in our canine unit so i think they do a great know, job those canines they yeah, really so, do i mean it's very nice again on his part to 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 want to do something to yeah to say thank you so i uh, yeah. i think you know i i think you both said and i'm saying the same thing uh, you know you know, we, Coda, we thank Coda's him for retired. you know for what was Coda, you know Coda. a very nice a nice thing that he wanted to try to do. Coda's retired. Coda's retired and living with the with the family of with the, the family, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that's the poignant and provocative side of when you have a canine unit. They they serve. They serve as a police officer does. In the case of Zeus, Zo, uh, Zeus, Zeus, uh, pass, oh, Zeus passed, passed away. Right. Yeah, but they have intercepted. Down through the years, particularly, well, both of them actually, but uh, one's retired and one has passed. Um, they have intercepted more drugs that have come into North Haven that if it wasn't for those canine units. Yeah, that was Coda's specialty, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, anyway, so that's Zeus, kind of where Zeus we are. chased people. I remember he <laughs> got injured once. Remember? Zeus, right. Zeus, Zeus was a powerhouse. Yeah. yeah. He was a <laughs> dog of tremendous <laughs> strength. The dog was bilingual in German. Yeah, and, and, and he's, he, the, the, he's the the dog uh, understood German. Yes. yes. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So we've acknowledged the correspondence. Yes. We've talked it through, and uh, I'm going to turn the rest of this over to you and Bill. Okay. Sure. I'll, I'll read number seven. It says that we are to consider and vote upon whether to authorize the first selectman, Michael J. Frieda, to execute an environmental land use restriction and related documents for the real property acquired by the town of North Haven from 415 Washington Avenue Partners, LLC, for the extension of Valley Service Road to the existing service road to Washington Avenue. So before we... Um look to vote on this resolution let me explain what this is so we have now started to move forward with the extension of valley service road that was part of the amazon uh, movement when we brought amazon in years ago here so during the course of that process we always knew that the state would some were along where along the line way in about this land use restriction it's actually a good restriction. What it entails is the fact that by passing this resolution tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that we will memorialize that in that area where the extension, the road is breaking through, there can be no residential usage and there can be no industrial or commercial building built near that extension. There has to be at least one acre distance between any property being built commercially or industrial or an industrial property near that area there so it's a good restriction and it memorializes what we need to do that road will eventually pop through construction has already started i was down there the other day looking at it and that will be good because it'll take some traffic off of washington avenue out the back way of valley service road to 91 south for those trucks and cars right i remember uh, talking about that at length uh, years ago um, when we were discussing Amazon and people had traffic concerns, that would certainly um, allow for lots of traffic to go right. to exit 11. You know, there's, yes. um, there's actually, th there were three components from um, what I read. I read through the 89 pages of, uh, the 89 pages of do the document. If I could request that next time there's a document more than 20 pages, if I can get it like two days ahead of time instead of... We all got of, it the day before. Oh, you did? You got it immediately <laughs> yeah. after okay. I got it. Because yeah. 89 pages was a lot to read today, but I, I did read it all. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I agree with the first selectman that the uh, restriction, there was actually two components to the residential part, the right. soil and the water right. part, as yeah. well as no buildings. Uh, and just to, to review, I know I've asked about this in the past, uh, uh, for the uh, payment of this extension, um, it, there is, it was bonding, town bonding is paying for some that was approved years ago? Yeah, is that it? Yeah, so it's state, uh, state, state funding and town bonding from before any of us were here yeah. in 2008. Way, way. So yeah, way, way. So any cost overruns beyond the money allocated is the expense of the uh, property owner. 
I remember that. I was happy about that. Yeah. Yes. So we, we do have some, uh, we will be bonding, uh, the town will be um, paying this through bonding to some extent. To, to some extent. Yes. Yeah. That bond resolution went in uh, 2008, and uh, so we'll exercise that. And uh, the state, uh, they have funding that might be partially federally funded. So, uh, but we've, we're on top of it in terms of the allocation and the property owner knows uh, that uh, they have to incur any cost over and above what we have along with the state, so. Okay, well, with um, our consideration pursuant to item seven, I think over, let's, um, shall I read eight? Yeah, so go right ahead, read yeah. eight, yes. I'll make a motion, resolve the f that the first selectman, Michael J. Frieda, is authorized to execute an environmental land use restriction and related documents for the real property acquired by the Town of North Haven from 415 Washington Avenue Partners LLC for the extension of Valley Service Road to the existing service road to Washington Avenue. So I will make I will move that resolution as read. I'll second that resol uh, uh, the resolution that Sally just read. All right. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Bill. We have a motion and we have a second. Any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, we'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill, I'll turn it over to you on item nine. Uh, yeah, I think number nine is bond releases. Uh, first one is uh, I'll make a motion to um, for the bond release for number 105-23, 828 Thompson Street. Amount of original bond, uh, $200,000. Current balance of bond, $200,000. Release in its entirety with the recommendation of the Inland Wetlands Commission. It's actually an I. It's I, yeah. It's an it's, I. I'm sorry. It's, it's I05. It's I05. I'm sorry. It looks like I'm one, but it's an I. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, um, uh, let me restate that. Um, uh, bond release for a number um, <laughs> I05. Dash 23 for 828 Thompson Street. Thank you. Uh, uh, I just have one one comment. And I, I know we have to vote on them individually, but my comment actually applies to all five that are on the agenda. Three of them are with the recommendation of Inland Wetlands and, and two um, with planning and zoning. Um, we, I can understand why some would need Inland Wetlands depending upon the issues and conditions. But I'm, I'm used to all of them having the recommendation of planning and zoning. Am I missing something? Or well, my understanding of those with inland, they were they were memorialized at the Inland Wetland Commission. It had nothing to do with the planning and zoning okay. commission. So this is this is an aberration what we would normally see. But there are some bonds that were really mandated by Inland Wetlands. So, so the conditions were only yeah. mandated by Inland Wetlands and They're, not jointly by. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have them from time to time, but it's not that often. Right. right. That's that's the only comment. So I will. Uh, um, so that's fine. I will second uh, um, Bill's motion regarding I O five dash twenty three. All right. Very good. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, we'll call for the vote on that bond. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next one. I will make a motion to approve uh, regarding I-19-13409 Washington Avenue, the amount of the original bond of $30,000, current balance of bond $30,000, that it be released in its entirety with the recommendation of the Inland Wetlands Commission. I will make that motion. I'll second uh, Sally's motion. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Bill. My next bond release um, is number I-15-0187 North Hill Road, amount of original bond uh, $2,500, current balance of bond $2,500, um, with a re uh, release in its entirety with the recommendation of the Inland Wetlands Commission. I'll second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll one. make a motion for uh, P20-21, 9-11 Defco Park Road, amount of original bond of $3,500, current balance of bond $3,500. Uh, make a motion to release in its entirety with the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission. 
I'll second that um, that motion by Sally. All right, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the uh, last one is the um, bond release for number uh, P15-0587 North Hill Road, amount of original bond $115,500, current balance of bond $50,000, uh, release in its entirety with a recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission and the town engineer contingent upon formal town acceptance of Mickey's Way by the town's legislative body uh, at a town meeting. Uh, I, d I have a, qu a procedural question here. Should yes. should this be tabled until the? I, I realize we are approving it with the contingent upon the formal town meeting, but is that the right way to do it, or should we wait for the town meeting to accept the road and then put we, it on the we've agenda? Done it in the past before, <laughs> where we we say that you know we approve it, but we wait for the town to accept the road. If the town doesn't, then it, it goes nowhere. Um, right until the I don't think we've ever had the town not accept a road right. because it right. usually always meets okay. all the criteria because the town engineer makes sure that everything is um, met all the criteria all is the, met yeah. before he even would re suggest to release it all the curbing and the side right sure before he yeah. would bring it to town meeting. I just wanted to make sure we weren't putting the cart before the horse no. so as long as um, <laughs> if you um, I'll second the motion so we have a, a yeah, we would have probably done a partial release on the bond already, I think, previously, if it was 115 originally. Right. There must have been other conditions yeah, not we, related we already, specifically um, to the road. The 50000 must be for the road itself. That is the that balance, remains. 50, yeah. Right. So, okay. So with right. this contingency, um, I'll second the motion. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Item number 10, who would like to take that? I'll make a motion to approve the property tax refunds reflected in the agenda. Uh, I'll uh, second uh, the, uh, the motion for the property tax refunds. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we covered a lot here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are on item number 11, and the next meeting here for the Board of Selectmen is Thursday, April 1st up here in the main conference area at North Havens Town Hall. So I thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we will uh, publish some of this information on the vaccines. So we'll try to get it to the local newspapers. And feel free to call us at any time if you have any questions on the vaccine or any questions in general. We're more than happy to answer any questions you have. With that being said, we're at item number 12. Would someone like to make that motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a nice evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we look forward to seeing you in April. Thank you. Thank you. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at NHTV.com.